Welcome back to the Redefine FX YouTube channel, everyone. So today we're doing this force field breach. I would like to thank Autodesk for sponsoring this video and let's jump right into it. So first thing I've animated this hand to just go forward across 125 frames. So we're going to need a geosphere sender create standard, just make a geosphere like this. You can hit Alt X so you can see through and you can actually just do a line and align it to the hand and just say center center. I think we can scale it up a little bit and sort of move it to the edge of the hand so that the hand will nicely come out of the sphere. So something like this looks good. You can hit Alt X again and hit R and then shift and scale down so you can make a copy that's just a little bit smaller. So Geosphere 02 will be slightly smaller than Geosphere 01 up top. So for now, let's hide Geosphere 01 and we're going to only work on the smaller one, Geosphere 02. And later we will need a tie flow wind. So under create helpers, tie flow, you can make a tie wind and rotate it to face the hand 90 degrees. And we can just set the strength to 0.5 centimeters. So this is what will push all of the particles and splines toward um, the force field like this. So next let's make tie flow. And first we're gonna focus on this opening and the second phase will be these particles on the hand. So for the opening, we just need to do a burst objects operator, pick the geosphere, face fracture. I want to fracture it into triangles for one face with zero variation. Next, we need a scale operator. Set the timing to continuous, right? So you can set the scale to maybe 80%. Just to check that our face fracture is working nicely and it is. So we can add a shell operator just to give these triangles some thickness. And we can do zero for the outer amount and maybe 10 centimeters for the inner amount. Now for the scale operator, we need to enable the scale by proximity. So just enable multiply by proximity, pick the hand, make sure you set the scale type to absolute. And then I did two centimeters for the distance and 10 centimeters for the fall off. And you can click invert. And so now what's happening is um, the triangles are nicely scaling down depending on how close they are to the hand. So that's how we're going to end up with this nice opening here. We just need to do the materials for it. We can enable outer material ID and edge material ID, right? So the edge will be the inside, which we want to be blue. So that's material ID two and the outside is matte ID one. And that will just in our example be black. So I'll actually just set the scale to hundred percent because I don't want there to be any gaps until the hand comes in contact with them, right? So we're getting something like this. We've done this many times on my channel. You can just create a new multi-sub object, set the number of IDs to two. The first one will just be a black V-Ray material. So you can just make that pure black with maximum reflection. And the other material we can just make blue for now, and then we'll switch it into a light, a V-Ray light material. So I'll just make it blue. And you can apply this multi-sub object to tie flow and everything is working, right? The outside is black and the inside is this nice um, blue color. So everything's working. And if you wanted to close the gaps between them, you can go back into the scale operator and just set this to like 110% until the gaps are closed, right? So don't forget to add a mesh operator to this and we can disable it and now just focus on the second portion, which are the particles coming off of the hand. So for that, we're going to use a birth intersections operator and we need to unhide our geosphere 01, which this is the larger one, right? So I'll just say pick, pick the geosphere. We need to set the mode to A and B and for geometry B, I will pick the hand. So now we're getting some particles being born whenever the hand intersects. So we can just hide the sphere. Now we're not getting very many particles. So I'll just set the threshold here to 10 centimeters and the end frame, um, we can do frame 100. So these will be these orange particles. So I want them to get stuck um, to the hand at first. So we can do object bind and just pick the hand. So now as you go forward, um, the hand is getting covered with particles, but you can see these very distinct lines 
and that's because they're only being born once per frame. So if we go under our Typhlo settings, set the time step to half a frame. So next we need to give them a shape, 3D, and I'll say chunks round, and we can set the display to geometry. So they're gonna be black, so let's give them a different material ID and set the ID to 3, which means we need to go back into our material editor and set the number of IDs to 3. And the third one can just be an orange uh, material for now. Orange with reflection. Here you go. So we're getting something like this. Now I think that the crystals are a bit too big. So again, scale operator, set it to absolute and maybe make it just 60%, right? So the orange particles are born on top of the hand and then after a while they begin flying off and bouncing off of the force field. So we just need a time test in here. And I think I set it to like 20 frames with 20 frame variation and just drag that into a new event. And in this new event, we're gonna need a force to make them fly away. So force operator, and I'll just pick the wind that we created earlier. So now the orange particles will be just flying off the hand after a while. I also wanna add some turbulence. So let's add another force operator and we can set the noise layer one to I think 0.8 and the noise layer two to like 0.6. So now they will have some random movement to them. And I also want them to collide with our Geosphere O2. So let me unhide it. Geosphere O2, again, that's the smaller one. And we can add a collision operator. We can just set the friction to zero, pick the sphere as our collider. And so now the particles are nicely colliding and spreading around. I also want to scale them down over time so we can do another scale operator. And again, set the timing to continuous set the scale type to absolute to 0% and the interpolation can be 0.1. So again, this means that they will um, just get smaller over time. And ultimately, I also want to delete them. So we can add a delete operator, set it to particle H from let's say 50. So once they reach H50, they die and we can give it a variation of maybe 10 frames. Right, so we can hide this geosphere and let's add the tie splines to get these trails happening. So one thing to note is they get, they're get they thick in the beginning and then they get thinner until they die for the splines. So first we need a spline paths operator and just click create new. Click on this to show it in viewport. Go forward a little bit. Right, so right now they have infinite lifetime so we need to go under tie splines here and you can either control their length by maximum h or maximum distance so i'll try maximum h of maybe three frames maybe one frame two frames okay that's pretty good and for the tie spline measure we can taper them by curve but right now they go from thin to thick so you need to drag these points and sort of invert them so that they go from thick to thin. And we can set the radius to maybe 0.1 centimeters. And let's give them that V-Ray light material. So materials, V-Ray, V-Ray light material, and set this to like a nice blue color with maybe three for the intensity and apply that to your tie splines, right? So we're getting close to our final result. So, of course, if you want to render this out, don't forget to add the mesh operator here and here. You can enable our event 01 and look at what all of this looks like together. So the hand comes out. Now I want to add a V-Ray light material to the orange pieces as well. So in my multi-sub object, I just want to make sure that this orange material is also a V-Ray light material. Make it nice and orange. Set the intensity to maybe 5 for the particles. And then for the blue inside, we can also do a VRA lab material, make it blue. You can keep the intensity at maybe two. And then I'll just unhide my lights. And let's right click VRA VFB and run the frame buffer. And this is what I'm getting. I think just the lens effects are a bit too strong. So I would reduce the size, reduce the intensity, and maybe increase the threshold here um, to get something that's not as intense. Um, you can also play with the colors a bit more. So this is more like a teal blue. And I think we want more like a 
darker blue for the tie splines. You can also make these particles a bit more orange. And if you zoom in, you get something like this. So then when you render it out, this was my final result. So as always, I hope that you guys learned something, that you found this helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll be uploading more. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.